Champ Ron Brooks, Champ Ron, coming to you live here on the Wisdom app on a third. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, a Thursday. Yep. Today is Thursday, the ninth man of 2022. Hope that you are well as you're listening to this. Uh, tap in with me, uh, Champ10K. Dot com. Champ10k.com is where you can tap in with me. If you're on the Wisdom app, you can tap in on the bio. Uh, if you're listening to this through the Mind of Your Business podcast, uh, it is in the show notes. Uh, so you can tap in right there with me. Uh, but uh, for those that are listening through the Mind of Your Business podcast, entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news, uh, as you know me uh, now for all these episodes, uh, I'm your host, Champ Ron. And uh, listen, we want to get into a few uh, things today, uh, but uh, to always share with you, there's three areas where I uh, help convert humans into champions, three areas uh, within my profession uh, that I do. One, uh, I am a podcaster, uh, of course, so for those that are listening here to the podcast or your own wisdom, I am the host of the Minding Your Business podcast, uh, which I do on a weekly basis. I've talked to guests all over the world, and so definitely tap in with me. Uh, we talk through uh, many people's stories and many people's um, you know, walks uh, in their journey in the intersection of business and lifestyle. So that's uh, typically what we talk about, and we have a lot of great uh, diverse guests that we've talked to over the years. Uh, some are uh, you know, have some famous appeal to them, and and some just have some really, really great uh, stories across a myriad of industries. So check that out, the Minding Your Business podcast. I'm also a real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate since 2007. I started uh, buying and holding uh, rental property. And then I've moved to uh, investing in land, which I do today, raw and improved land. And I do some wholesaling and some hoteling, uh, various real estate strategies. And then the last piece of that, I am a mentor coach uh, as it relates to real estate. And so I'm working with mentees right now, uh, you know, a lot of diversity there, men and women, who are interested in launching their real estate business on their terms. And so I help you do that. I do have a, a course curriculum and then um, uh, access to a, a private Discord uh, on the Discord app where myself and my business partners, we do uh, one-on-one mentorship, again, to help you build your business on your terms. So it's great uh, for people that whether you want to be a full-time uh, real estate investor or if you want to be part-time or if you just want to supplement what you're already doing. Uh, we've got a mentee right now that uh, is starting up a really neat uh, nonprofit business in Oklahoma City, and she just wanted seed money. Um, and that was it. She just wanted seed money to uh, to come on and uh, and, and kind of help build up her nonprofit as she's getting that off the ground. And so, isn't it great just to get an extra, you know, three or five or ten thousand dollars, you know, to, to help do that? And so, you know, whatever your uh, aspirations are, we want to help you build and craft and customize your business uh, to your lifestyle as it relates to real estate investing. So I do that. And then last thing, I am the president and CEO of River City Capital uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee. We provide uh, loan capital to uh, black, indigenous, and women business owners here in the Memphis Shelby County area. So, again, you can check that out through my link, or you can go to rivercitycapital.org. And uh, we're very excited about that. We work with some great dynamic partners uh, around providing uh, loan cap. So whether you're starting up a business here in Memphis or you have an existing business, uh, we have uh, a product set and uh, funds available uh, to deploy. And so uh, definitely tap in with me uh, there. So those are the three areas where I, um, you know, really get busy and, and able to help people. Um, I've got a guest waiting, but give me just a second. I want to go through kind of what's going on. So um, it's been reported in February. Um, reported by uh, the Department of Labor uh, and deported, oh, sorry, in, uh, reported, excuse me, um, across uh, various uh, uh, respected news channels, including CNBC, uh, that the consumer price index uh, for February rose 7.9%, and that's a year over year um, growth. So that's tracking 
uh, inflation and uh, some consumer, um, you know, just a consumer pricing index. So, you know, what uh, the average consumer is feeling um, that's coming out of their income that rose 7.9% year over year. So that's been uh, the highest uh, increase uh, since January of 1982 when I was a one year old. <laughs> so uh, if you, if, for those of you that were around in 1982 and, and politically aware, um, that was when uh, you, those are early Reagan days where uh, you had um, an economy that wasn't growing, and uh, you also had some uh, Middle Eastern turmoil that was going on uh, at that time combined. So not much different than today, right, well, what we have with uh, Russia and the Ukraine situation and the impact of that, particularly with Russia being the, the third largest oil producer in terms of barrels, uh, in, in the, on the planet, essentially, and when you shut that off, of course, the, the cascading effect is the impact of oil distribution around the world, including the United States, and uh, the subsequent rise in, in gas prices, which you've seen not just in the United States, but you've also seen around the world. And while there's been a lot of talk about it in the United States, because we're accustomed to uh, certain gas prices, and so when those things increase, for many Americans who don't track this, it, it comes off as arbitrary. Uh, there's an impact, right? And uh, here in Memphis, where uh, inside uh, our core of our city, roughly about 26, 27 percent of the population lives at or below the poverty line. So when you combine that, that's a nasty brew uh, where it's uh, impacting people. On top of that, of course, you've got um, uh, food and energy, which are increasing. Uh, the core inflation grew 6.4 percent, according, according to CNBC, um, and that's the highest since August of 1982. And so these are things that uh, you know uh, are impacting people. They're impacting businesses as businesses struggle still uh, to find workers. As there's about 4.8 million um, uh, available jobs out there. As many people left their jobs in 2021, and there's just been a, a very slow trickle back there. And uh, businesses are uh, being impacted, both rising costs and then wise, rising wages, as they're having to attract people back to their uh, to their companies. So, with that, I'm gonna let my guests come up and uh, see what they got on their mind, and then we're gonna continue this thing on. But let's talk about it. Um, what you're feeling out there, and what you're seeing. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, that's there's definitely a lot going on right now. I'm doing pretty good, actually. Um, and I just want to say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you're on here talking about this because it's not talked about as, uh, enough, um, considering that that's just how we live our lives uh, as far as, you know, the information that's out there and the way we receive it as well through all these media outlets. Because if you because I I study the markets every day. So like I, this information okay. is al already disseminated on the stock market and the stock exchange. Um, and, and, you know, news sources pick up some of this stuff last hand as far as inflation data goes. But this was uh, it, this was a catalyst that was expected to happen for quite some time. And up until now, with all the I personally believe the, the pandemic expedited um, these these rising interest rates. In addition to the fact that when you had people that were in and out of work, more specifically, um, the type of unemployment, which is what they call um Structural unemployment in macroeconomics. So stu structural um, unemployment change is basically changes in the workforce. And a lot of that's also due to f frictional unemployment, which is what a lot of people are going through right now in, in the U.S. And that doesn't reflect heavily on the consumer price index and, of course, also the employment data as well. Um, frictional unemployment is temporary unemployment or being between jobs. And it's basically individuals that are qualified workers with transferable skills. And because people have been, you know, looking for other jobs, they're, they're sourcing out their options accordingly. And some still are frustrating with the fact that they have a degree, but it's virtually, you know, impossible to try to keep a sustainability due to the not only supply constra uh, constraints, but you also have the fact that workers are not being compensated enough in addition to that. And that's all that's also causing another push for inflation as well because you have inflationary pressures with uh with the labor force because now these these companies have to factor in how much more they're going to pay their workers in accordance to how much they're playing, paying for a supply and demand but when there's so much demand and then there's, there's not enough supply that creates <laughs> another issue with and of itself as far as that 
pressures go for inflation. So now you have the price driven inflation based off of the scarcity of, of supplies, which is creating another issue. And I joke with my yeah. friends all the time with saying that, and it's, it's, you know, the, the outcome is looking more, uh, <laughs> more, more prominent, actually not prominent, but it, it looks more likely considering the circumstances of our uh, economics. But I joke with my friends and I say that stagflation could be an issue that could happen as a result of a recession. And stagflation is basically, uh, it, it's stagnant activity and accelerating, infl- uh, accelerating inflation. So you have the Federal Reserve that's going to be uh, implementing their interest rate hikes actually by March of this year. So later this March, and Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell will be holding a meeting pretty um, pretty soon this month and implementing that first rate at a, qu- at a, at a quarter rate. And they, they have, first, it was a half rate, a 0.5, but it's a quarter rate because they know that that could be very volatile territory uh, for investors in the market as well, but also for consumers as well. And the thing is, is like you mentioned, you know, the GDP data, I'm sorry, not the GDP, but the CPI data has, as far as inflation go, it hasn't really been reached. It's it hasn't been reaching all time highs until now, you know, 40 years. And you see where our economy is versus where it once used to be. But the thing is, is a phenomenon of stagflation results to the fact of stag, uh, stagnant unemployment. And there's not, a, there's too much unemployment or people that are not employed or should be employed. Um, and the fact that you have inflation. So now you have people that are trying to, you know, t- to reallocate their finances and of course go over the monthly expenditure, but it's kind of hard to keep track of that considering that you're forfeiting more money on a monthly basis due to the rising prices of consumer goods, domestic goods, and of course commodities as well. And that creates more issues. So now the inaccessibility is creating friction in both the stock markets to the, the crypto market is always going to find a way for people to hedge, hedge against uh, inflation. But people are rushing to, to invest in commodities right now, like gold, oil, and perhaps energy stocks as well. I'm invested in a few energy stocks. Um, but like, it, it's just crazy to see where all, where all of this is coming from. I mean, this has been happening behind closed doors for quite some time. But because the issue is become, becoming more uh, out there, like it's, it's becoming more aware it's it's kind of hard to hide so like what's done in the dark eventually comes to light so that's that's why all of this stuff is adding up now and it can to some people be overwhelming considering that they should have you know been been aware of this now you have people that are rushing to refinance their mortgages and of course you have people that are trying to pay down credit card debt before these interest rates rise because you do not want to be in debt when you have these rising interest rates because that'll that'll be more hurtful to you but the whole premise here of macroeconomics is to ensure that it reduces. Hey, hey, Mal- hey, listen, that's my guy, Malcolm. We're here on the Wisdom Map. Mac has given, you know, just, he's just dropping gems all over the place, man. If you're not picking those up, um, shame on you, man. He just in five minutes just broke this whole thing down, man. So to give a hand clap for Malcolm, we're going to bring him back up. Uh, Because I want him to finish that point because it's it's really, really important uh, that you understand um, kind of really what's going on uh, from someone who's studying this every day like Mac does. And so uh, let's if you're here in the room, uh, show some love, uh, give some hand claps, whatnot, um, you know, for uh, Malcolm in this. I'm going to bring him right back because I want him to finish that point um, with where he was going because I'm going to have some thoughts that I want to share on this as well so hey mac man keep going you cooking brother yeah, man, I, always see the I love it i mean what you're talking about is great i love it this is what i breathe um but no in all in all retrospect uh, it's important to just understand where your finances are because you don't want to be on the other end of the stick when things start to become more tight so you have these companies that are rebalancing their, their monthly expenses, so their balance sheets are going to look a little interesting for these coming quarters. More specifically, I personally estimate or project that companies won't start making true true growth on their on their company due to the constraints of the pandemic and, of course, supply strains, uh, constraints until about maybe fourth quarter of this year because they have to factor in so many expenses. But even then, that that's uh, an optimistic catalyst. So with that being in mind, if companies are out here struggling, <laughs> I, I have no doubt – that there's, right. of course, consumers that are also fe- feeling the, the heat of what's happening in, in politics and, and economics as well. So that's why it's, I think I just would, would conclude with saying it's just be weary of, of your finances and, and, and with what's happening in, in the economy so you can always stay ahead of the curve so you know what you have to do. Pretty soon you're going to start seeing these infomercials saying, and I've already seen a few of them saying, 
refinance your mortgage right now before interest rates rise or refinance your card note before interest rate rise, so on and so forth, or pay down yeah. your credit card. You know, have these companies that are saying, we'll pay your credit card debt. Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically taking on another debt to pay down a debt. That's crazy. That's just crazy. Yeah. It shouldn't have to be that point. Right. No, that's but, a great point, uh, Matt. And uh, what another piece of that is student loans, right? Like people you know, oh, who yeah. have these student loans out there that could be repriced, right? Yeah, so what happens with student loans is is that these other enti- these other financial entities uh, take on that student loan from an entity that couldn't fulfill that particular account. So like when these these collections companies or these 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 loan uh, companies they take on these loans and they they try to go after the loans from the people that took them out. So the borrowers, um, typically, that some, especially recently, they haven't been able to satisfy those accounts. So now they're sending them to banks to try to get relief for that because now these these collection companies are facing the tail end of it too. It's like a cult domino effect of issues. So now they're asking the banks for bailouts. The banks are like, hey, we're struggling too, man. I mean, look at it. We already had to cut off ties with Russia. And on top of that, we lost quite a heavily amount of clients and have frozen foreign assets. And on top of that, federal reserves. And the thing is, is for banks, the Federal Reserve, uh, in, rising their interest rates is actually good for banks because it helps them um, right. mediate their expenses on a, on a monthly basis as far as their clients go as well for those interest accounts. But ultimately, they're struggling right now because they're, they're trying to um, <laughs> divvy out their expenses and those the accounts that weren't satisfied as well because banks, on a, uh, they report on a monthly basis uh, charge-off uh, balances. So they've had to execute a lot of charge off accounts from people that went delinquent with banks. So that's another thing that they're factoring in. There's just so much going on. I don't, I don't have the time <laughs> to explain. Yeah. But like, that's what I talk about on my show too, as well. So like, I have a yeah. MLT Media, it's, and then I talk about it a little bit on topics with Mac on here as well. So I, I enjoy talking about finance and economics. It's it's, uh, it's, it's my field. But yeah, yeah. Um, just be aware of your finances, folks. <laughs> and I appreciate you having me. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, man. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you sharing how we can connect with you, man. And if you're here on the Wisdom Map, it's Topics with Mac. Make sure that uh, those of you that are here in the room, you're following him. And um, and definitely check him out. Uh, how can they connect with you on social media, man? Uh, they can connect with me on social media by tapping in on my Wisdom profile. If you guys are listening from Wisdom, um, from the Wisdom Map, or if you repurpose this audio and you put it somewhere else, uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at Malcolm dot reese underscore um in addition to that uh, it's twitter but i don't really use twitter that often i need to start using it but yeah yeah um there's that i put that out there so uh once again i I appreciate you having me uh also before i go how's your name pronounced uh so champron champron wow yeah all right i like that champron thank you very much for having me man you take care i look forward to Yep, absolutely, man. That's my guy, Malcolm, right there. Topic with Mac uh, here on the Wisdom Map. I appreciate him hopping on. Uh, someone who covers this subject profusely uh, on a daily basis, man. So definitely qualified uh, to share those thoughts. And uh, he hit on several really good points that I want to continue to touch on um, that he set the stage for around this conversation, which is uh, managing your personal finances. So you all know, uh, those of you that do follow me, uh, my wife, uh, and uh, we have three daughters. Uh, we're here in Memphis, and we're always having to watch. We also have two dogs. Um, so we're always having to watch and be mindful of uh, our finances and, and mindful of not just our spending, but what are our incomes. And so that's something that I want to touch on, too. As um, prices go up um, for whatever the foreseeable future is, uh, interest rate, and it's interest rate expense, too, interest rate costs, not just the rate. Uh, per se by itself, but the cost of the interest, right? Like how does it get applied uh, to your, your principal balance on whatever your loan is, whether it's a credit card, a student loan, a mortgage, uh, a card note, whatever it is, what's your interest cost? Um, so look at the rate, but then also look at your amortization schedules on things. And if your debt gets repriced, then you've got to make sure that you're uh, also looking at what's the cost of having that credit. And that's why, uh, you have that drive to want to refinance. It's actually a very prudent move um, in this current environment because we don't know where this is going. And the United States of America, you know, right now we've got, what, you know, $4 gas all the way around on 87 octane. 
Uh, most of us are haven't seen that in our but let's just say this thing creeps up and it doubles. Let's just say we start getting to seven, eight dollars a gallon uh, for gasoline. We're not used to that uh, here in America. And so, um, what do you, you know, what are you going to do? And for many of us, there's only so many cuts we can make, right, to um, to our expenses and to save. And so, in a rising cost environment, you're not always going to be uh, able or have the luxury to. Um, you're not always going to be able to do that. So what you're going to have to do, is, and I spoke about this earlier, this is where I'm helping people specifically uh, when it comes to real estate uh, with the Property Champs Mentorship course. Um, the, the the reason people are getting in it, you know, if they're interested in being a real estate investor in, in some form or fashion, it's a great way to boost your income and to add um, additional um you know, what people like to refer to as streams of income, but just additional incomes, period, whether it's a stream or not, <laughs> um, you need to add additional income, right? And so if you're working a job, um, you're sort of on fixed income unless you are you get paid by the hour and you have the opportunity to increase your hours. That's an opportunity for you to trade in time for money, right? That's okay, but that's not sustainable. Right. It's not sustainable to simply just trade in time for money. Um, what you want to be able to do is um, start, you know, uh, creating an opportunity where you've got assets. Right. And assets can do the work. They become like your little bots that work for you. Right. And so that's what I teach in, in from a real estate standpoint and how to build that on your own terms. But with what's going on and Mac just spoke to it beautifully. Um, with your personal finances, you want to always be taking a look at that. You know, don't shove that side at all. You need to be looking at that on a consistent basis. Look at your spending. Look at those subscriptions that you signed up for, right? Um, you know, you've got all these little subscription TV apps and stuff like that. You've got all the Amazon charges and subscriptions and things like that. There are apps that can help you uh, with managing that type of stuff, right? Go through your bank statement. Look at where you're spending, how you're spending it, um, you know, things like that. And look at and scrutinize that. At the same time, look at incomes, right? So if you're, if you're working a job right now, let's just say you're making $80,000 a year and, you, and you're working a job, right? And you're making pretty decent money uh, for your market unless you live on a coast. <laughs> but if you're living more in middle America or whatever you, and you don't have a, a huge family, uh, $80,000 is, is not bad, but in a rising uh, cost environment, you're, you're getting squeezed a lot more. And so, you know, look at, you know, are there opportunities and ways for you to increase or add additional income? Because you're, let's just say you're an $80,000 earner, but you're on salary. So you really don't have the uh, opportunity to increase your income, you know, at least not immediate at your job, unless you get some sort of promotion. And um, depending on your company, good luck with that. Um, but so, so your thing is, is you know, let's you know, look at it, what if you could add and supplement your income. So if you added, let's just say, even if you added, um, you know, three thousand dollars a month, two or three thousand dollars a month to your income by you know real estate, by starting an online business, by starting a consulting business, well, you know, whatever it is that kind of fits your your passion, uh, kind of fits your scope and uh, your time commitment, that sort of thing. If you could do that, now you boost your income from eighty thousand a year to say a hundred thousand a year, hundred and ten thousand a year. All right. So now, if you're increasing your income ahead of inflation, because if inflation continues at the rate that it continues, um, you know that that's where you know you're going to you know feel that unless you have a way to kind of both increase your income. Uh, as well as you know, manage or, or increase or, or, or reduce your expenses. Now, one of the things that's interesting, and this came from CNBC um, from the article, and uh, Mac earlier uh, he touched on this a little bit, but I want to expound. You know, even though you've got the increase in inflation on kind of food and uh, energy expenses, and then of course gas, um, you saw a flattening out in February of uh, vehicle costs. Because remember, during the pandemic. Uh, particularly this latter part of the pandemic through the 2021, you saw this stark increase in used car prices, especially. I mean, new cars, some, but used cars jumped up exponentially, man. I mean, 
Um, right now, uh, through well, I guess through two, September of 2021, per CNBC, um, used car costs are still up 41.2% uh, over last year. So year over year, uh, they're up 41.2%. However, for the month of February, uh, there was actually a slight decline, a 0.2% decline uh, in used car and, and used truck prices. Um, and this was in the month of February of 2022. So uh, what you're starting to see that that continues to be a trend. Of course, one month isn't a trend, right? But if you start to see a trend with uh, a reduction in uh, used car prices, that's going to be very interesting considering what we're seeing across the board in other areas. So uh, that'll be something to keep uh, our eyes out on. Um, because again, through this latter part of the pandemic, um, going and, and buying a used car right has been something where you've just seen the prices uh you know just skyrocket because it goes back to something matt talked about uh, you've got the stark increase in demand right but you've got supply issues right and so that just creates a nasty brew just in your economics 101 of, of supply and demand but this is a very interesting topic um with what's going on and one of the things the points i want to drive home is this is not just a united states problem OK, so oftentimes we look at things from a, a very micro level, uh, but this is not just the United States uh, problem. You know, if you go into some of the European countries, you know, how about going to Venezuela and buying gas right now? You know, if you think gas is high here, <laughs> right, go to some of these other countries where um, it, it, it's really wild and the lifestyles that are associated um, are different as a result of, of many of those things. Um, the policymakers in some of these other countries um, operate in a, in a total different scope. Um, so, you know, that's one thing I want to, you know, keep it, have everybody keep in mind is that this is not just a, a United States issue. You know, there are a lot of countries, there are a lot of companies um, that do business with Russia, right? So think about this, and, and Matt talked about this a little bit, um, if you have a company that was doing business with Russia in, in whatever capacity, and now that's been frozen, right, because the United States government uh, has decided to use uh, any interaction, any uh, business, any transactions as it deals with Russia, well, for some companies, that's a, a pretty sized uh, piece of their portfolio, or it could be a, a, a recent project that they're working through that they put a lot of resources and time into that now has been uh, halted, right? And so then there's a cascading impact that that can have um, on the company, on the vendors who work with that company on a day-to-day -day basis, um, on the surrounding communities that that company uh, is uh, residing in, and then uh, the people that work for the company, right? So there, there's a lot of impact. You know, Russia has their... Um, tentacles tied in a lot of different areas. Um, one, as I mentioned, being uh, the third largest oil producer by barrel uh, in the world right now. So again, you, you freeze that, you start cutting that off. Um, there's some banks that have investments tied to Russia, right, and the Russian economy. And so all these things have an impact, right? And so it's going to be very interesting as we go into the summer months, right, which are typically, you know, times of um, you know, more travel in the past, certainly pre-pandemic, there was a lot more kind of consumer-based travel. Um, it'll be interesting to see what travel does here over the next, um, you know, several months through the rest of this year. And then as we see these prices go up and we get towards Memorial Day, right, in May, you know, what does Memorial Day look like? Typically, it's a big travel uh, weekend around uh, Memorial Day in May. Well, what does that look like in a um, and in spike ups in gas prices and expenses and things like that, you know, booking hotels, um, trips, things like that, um, particularly with those with, um, you know, with, with income challenges, right? So it looks like we got Matt coming back up, man. I want to hear some more. I like hearing from Matt because he, he cooks with these type of things and he looks at it every day. And so, man, let's have him come back up. Matt, you're back, man. Yeah, man, with this kind of topic, man, five minutes doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> hey, like we'll, so keep, much, we'll keep bringing you up, man. <laughs> so much to talk about uh, with everything that's happening, and you were definitely touching on some vital points here. I, I will say, though, based off of just the current circumstances in our economy right now at this moment, 
uh, until the Federal Reserve starts implementing more interest rate hikes, which, by the way, they stated that they plan on doing at least seven this year. I don't personally believe that they'll accomplish that goal because they'll have to readjust uh, based off of how the economy reacts to what's been happening as a global issue as far as, you know, the, the Russia-Ukraine right. issue. And then on top of that, the, the, the deals that they're trying to broker is to try to um, – keep these oil prices down as well and the problem is is that no one's basically reaching out back uh, reaching back out with biden biden's asking all of our adversaries like hey uh can we get some of your oil oh no that's fine okay i guess we'll we'll have to tap into our reserves here that's fine Uh, i'll just make you know these domestic oil companies start producing oil again which right now in the market these domestic oil companies have been doing pretty good they're pretty stocks but uh, penny stocks but that's besides the point um the thing here is that like it with what you mentioned, it won't. I don't. I personally don't believe that. Even though we have get higher gas prices, it won't disrupt um, the human, the way we live our lives, like human life right now, because it's not as big of an issue as it poses. Besides, obviously, the rising gas prices, which people can weather. But the thing is, is right. that people are only going to put up with this kind of thing for so long. And I can't help but feel as though, with the agenda that the Biden administration is trying to push with all green energy and, and EVs, one has to understand that. EVs are not completely sustainable just yet. I mean, we, we need uh, more lithium and resources as well. I mean, Elon Musk was on here last night. I'm sure he, he'd more than glad <laughs> be glad to talk about that, <laughs> sure. considering that that's the uh, field of his uh, focus. But just understanding it from the outside in, I mean, looking at it from the outside, because I don't know all the, the mechanisms of the inside. It's just it's not completely sustainable just yet. So we're not ready for that complete economic shift as well. And plus, we need more energy as well. And there's just that we need more wind farms, of course. We need more infrastructure. I mean, even though we passed an infrastructure package, what, two years ago? About just about, right. well, about a year and a half or so ago. I mean, the, for that to be enacted into law, I mean, you, that would take a, about halfway through the next presidential administration that's in the office because these, these businesses have to incorporate the expenses. And, of course, they need the permits. Of course, they have to ask and seek approval. There's so much, so much work involved to, to get new infrastructure in the cities to get the grants that they need from these uh, from these corporate bonds as well. That that'll help them tremendously because uh, say municipal limits they look forward to those government bonds, um, and that's basically the government saying here here's a little bit for you for your city as well, depending on um, your your consumer tax there as well. So they they kind of play favorites when it comes to that, which is why you notice some cities are. And in, in worse positions than others. But yeah, what you said as well uh, about the fact that it's impacting uh, global, it's, it's more of a global impact than it is a domestic impact. You're absolutely right because now you have other company, uh, un- other countries that, that are suffering at the expense of not only, and they're trying to recover from the pandemic as well, but they're also suffering at the expense of this rising refugee crisis as well. And then mm, on top of that, all sure. these central banks are trying to administer aid as well, and it's just not doing enough justice um oh and i also wanted to touch on the fact with you said uh with you having uh the inflation rose to 7.9 percent. i forgot to mention that earlier and yes per these um the the cpi data that which by the way we're uh, waiting on another one um that's going to be uh, dropping in the market pretty soon uh, i'd say by this um by this month um that's only re- what what they chose to report considering that you have to understand with the consumer price index that's only reeling in a domestic basket of goods and there's certain demographics that are not incorporated in that like people that are in the military that's a demographic of people that are not incorporated a whole different demographic some of them are excluded right. at the expense that it would be skewed as well and a lot of people don't know that and i checked the cpi data and of course the gdp data because G- uh, the gdp also goes hand in hand with that as well and the gdp data will also uh, suffer at, at the expense of the lack of of goods distributed domestically in the U.S. and that's that, that just measures um, um, the, the price in, in, in terms of uh, flow uh, on a monthly basis as far as um, consumer goods are, are concerned. But that's going to reflect reflect heavily because of the trucker shortage and and, and the, the lack of of supply. And it's just going to suck because these companies, these private business owners, more specifically, are going to suffer more because. It's harder for them to to factor in the ex- oh crap I have four seconds <sighs> yeah come on back up let me man. let me we'll hop keep, back we'll keep it going yep we'll come back up yeah I, I had that set for uh, five minutes at a time and uh, man five minutes as Max says is not enough time to to really get this in and, and I want to ask him about the EV uh, piece too particularly as it relates to um, uh, the grids in many cities around that infrastructure so I want to get Max take on that too. 
Uh, let's see. Mac, why is it not letting me bring you back up, brother? I see you there waiting, but when I tap on it, it's not. Uh, I tell you what, Matt, go back out and then try to come back in. Because um, for some reason, it's not uh, letting me uh, bring you back up when I was tapping on it. So it may just be a, a glitch in the app. Uh, but come on back up, Matt, um, whenever you're ready. And uh, we'll have you come right back. Let's see. Um, for some reason, it's not letting me. Can you, bring can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, that's cool. No, this app for some is, reason, uh, on my app, it still shows that one guest waiting, but I, so I don't see you, but I you're there, know. so let's do it. It's weird, <laughs> isn't it? It's really odd. This app's really buggy, and now I honestly don't know if I'm even on or not. Like, I've seen this a few times on other people's shows, but yeah, yeah. that's one of, the, one of the few glitches here. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, man, go ahead. Uh, you, you, you mentioned that you had a question that you wanted me to uh, to, to Yeah. So you know, around EV, so when, I, when you look at the, the infrastructure in many, you know, of course, like major cities, there's a lot of um, the left to be desired, right, in terms of upgrading the infrastructure. And so that would be, you know, uh, it'd be a question I'd cascade to, to Elon as well if I were talking with him. It would be the thought um, from a long-term prognosis on, you know, what, what do we see, um, you know, energy grids in many of these cities. You know, for example, here in Memphis, we had a, a pretty minor ice storm in February, but for some people, they had power knocked out for two weeks, <laughs> you know, right? Um, and so I, I'm curious, as, as there's an increase in EV usage from, um, you know, electric vehicles and things like that, what, what's the prognosis or thought around how we continue to upgrade infrastructure to support it? Um, what are your thoughts there? Well, there's a lot of money involved when it comes to that kind of innovation, of course, and um, just incorporation of those kind of uh, resources, especially when it comes to sustainable energy, because everybody wants sustainability. Yes, so solar panels are definitely the way uh, the way to go, but the average consumer can't truthfully uh, afford um, these mm. expensive solar panels. So people that can, they normally install them in areas where there's a vast amount of sunlight, and of course that energy is then... Um, re repurposed for their own uh, needs, of course, and there, there, there definitely there needs to be more um, accessibility, of course, uh, when it sure. comes to this kind of this kind of innovation because it would help out tremendously. But nobody, it's just not as popular now. Well, I mean, it is it's popular now. It's just not as easily acquired. And once they make it more mm. accessible, there will be a greater adoption of. EVs, of course, and of course, there's you have also these charging networks for which there's only about maybe I would say in the U.S. Uh, probably last time I, th I read, I think 7,500 in the U.S. But the great okay. thing here is that what'll help push out the EV initiative is when these third-party energy uh, energy providers, EV go to be one of them. That's their tick their ticker name, EVGO. Um, they're going. They're they're planning to expand on third party um, what, um, these these electric chargers for EVs because all these EV manufacturers out here are going to start. Um, well, these these general combustion engine manufacturers out here are going to start converting to EVs. General Motors being one of them by the year two thousand thirty five. And so, in order to make it more accessible, so people don't feel as though it's it's too harsh on the wallet or th there's not enough um, incentive in it. They're, they're going to eventually adopt a greater EV network, which will happen relatively soon. And actually, in states like California, they've actually um, enacted legislation to to not allow people to um, to, to manufacture uh, gas stations anymore. And that going forward, um, it, it's only EV charging stations, which is which is really good, because one of the things that the, the, the Biden administration is trying to 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 really um tackle is, is climate change we we really need to take care of our environment and, and it doesn't help right. that we're, we have all these plants out here in addition to the the, 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 the it's it's there's so much combustion it's ridiculous like when you just see the emissions which is why yeah. cars still nowadays go for e-checks it's 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 ridiculous but on that note yeah um i think personally as soon as it becomes more affordable and easily accessible and convenient for the consumer it, it'll yeah. definitely help push the initiative tremendously. I hope that answers your question. No, it does. Um, it, it gives some good, you know, kind of perspective around, um, you know, Mac it, it, it in regard.